Hi, I'm Ben and I'm the CTO here at BIM Object and welcome to this tutorial of the Stanley facade application for Revit. So what I'd like to do here is demonstrate um, via a step-by-step -step tutorial how we actually use the Stanley facade application for Revit. So as you can see here, there's different ways that we can actually get in the individual components into the Stanley facade placement tool. Now the Stanley, Stanley facade placement tool is an automated uh, placement tool. So as you can see here, via our app, all of the individual components which can be used with the facade application can be downloaded and inserted into the project via our app. Now there is another way that you can um, download the full package, um, but this needs to be done via a normal web browser and via bimobject.com. You can actually download all of the families, all of the materials and the application as well, which are contained inside of a zip file. And again, you'll find it on bimobject.com and if you simply search after the manufacturer Stanny. So once you've downloaded and installed the application, uh, a tutorial for the installation of the application could be found down in the description bar here. You simply either in the 2D window or the 3D window. Click on one of the horizontal or the, the vertical formats, depending on which way you'd like to um, set out the, the panels. And as you can see here, you uh, are presented with a dialog box. And we have the frame families, the panel families, the horizontal families, vertical families, and even the corner families as well. Now, if you download the individual components via our app, what you will need to do before you can see them in the list is to click on the little refresh button uh, beside each family component. Under the frames, uh, what we're showing here now is frame depth on wall is actually 100% is the frame on the outside, the most outer part of the wall. The panel to panel gap I'll come back to in a moment. So what we can do is actually is change the panels, uh, sorry, the gap between the panels and then the profiles, which I'll come back to in a moment as well. So once you've entered those settings and simply place panels, what you'll see here now is that we're placing all of the panels out with the substructures and the framing structures as well behind everything. So I'll just go ahead and select all of the panels and go ahead and hide these. So what you're seeing here now is the substructure and the framing structure behind the panels. So again, all of these components are individual components so they can be edited individually and free from the add-on as well. So if you would like to do a, a special type of solution um, that means that you need to uh, to have freedom to be able to change the the individual components, you can do that as well. These um, components can be placed out individually via um, the, the placement method via the components um, part of, of Revit. And again, we have the vertical uh, format here as well. And under the panel families, you can find all of the panel family types that are available. And again, uh, if you hide these panels, you'll see the substructures and the framing structures behind the panels as well. And as you can see here, the panels are adjustable. They are constrained to within the, the Stanley constraints, so you can't go outside of the Stanley constraints. And as you can see here, we're placing out the, uh, the com corner components as well. And again, these can be manipulated uh, individually and outside of the context of the actual application. So what I've done here now is just gone ahead and taken the vertical format for the next wall and simply clicked on the wall and set everything and then placed it out. And as you can see here, because we have two different wall heights, you can see that there's different uh, wall components here. So there's, uh, there's two methods that we can use here. Either we can go back and frame and put the panels on the individual components or we can manipulate the existing components to cover up the rest of the wall as well. And again, as what you're seeing here is that we're placing out all of the, compo the corner components as well, uh, which is very useful. So what I'd like to show now is the different uh, profiles and the different um, horizontal and vertical profiles. So what we can actually do, as you can see here now, we have placed the horizontal and vertical profiles. We can also place the facade elements without the vertical and horizontal profiles as you're seeing here as well. So if we just go ahead and bring up the horizontal format and click on the wall, as you can see here I've chosen not to have the horizontal and vertical profiles. So what you'll see now is a gap in between the panels. So you don't necessarily have to have a profile between the panels either. Uh, there's a gap 
a, a panel gap to gap setting as well. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and delete these. You can find um, the delete button inside of the app as well and it takes the whole system away which is uh, very quick and easy to, um, to do. So again if we just click on the horizontal format click the desired wall and what I'll do now is change the panel to panel gap um, which the default value is actually five millimeters so you can change that to a custom value at this uh, in this case I wanted to sort of really show it so I'll put in a large value here and you can see here that it's 20 millimeters in the horizontal and vertical patterns so again you have full freedom uh, from within inside the context of the application to be able to change the uh, the panel to panel gap as well so if we just go and change those to the default and place those back out again so what I'd like to do now is go ahead and show the material settings here so we've also created a material package for the Stanny solution so you can see here we have the three different colors Imago and nature packages with the color package, you won't need to do anything more than to simply insert it into your existing project. You can either do it via the material browser or via the project standards. Um, with the Imago and the Nature series, you will need to relink the texture images uh, that are available with the uh, individual materials, as you can see here. So the, the material images are missing, so you will need to reload them. Uh, it's quite simple. Simply load it into your project, click on the um, on the link, and simply browse to the Imago or to the Nature folder, and select the corresponding material or image. Click Apply, and then it's done for you. So it's now inserted into your project, and you can go ahead now, and as you can see here, uh, change the material of that particular facade um, component. So what I'd like to do now is just go ahead and change these individual components. So you can change them on a global scale or you can change them individually as, I, as I'm doing here. I'd like to show different patterns. Now we can combine the facade cladding elements as well. So we can combine them with the horizontal and vertical. We can even combine them with the horizontal and vertical within the same facade. What you will need to do is to go back and actually manipulate the components uh, manually. So if you like to have some different sizes or some vertical components with inside of a horizontal component, you'll actually need to go and change that manually. So what I'm doing here now is just going ahead and clicking on these components that I'd like to uh, change the materials for. And if we go into the main material, and if we click on the green color here, select it, and then simply click OK. And as you can see here, all of the uh, selected facade elements are changed if we go in and maybe change it to this blue color or turquoise color and then that's changed and maybe we can go on use one of the nature textures or the Imago textures if we choose a, a darker color here maybe a black color so if we just select those and go into the main material or maybe even load in a new material here so let's go to the nature and click on the SN305 and simply click on the arrow to import that in and again you'll need to go and link the the image texture to that particular material and in this case it's the, the 305 select that click apply OK and then what we'll see now is that uh, those facade elements have updated accordingly So what I'd like to do now is just quickly go in and have a look at a, uh, a schedule. So as you can see here, we have all of the density information. We have all of the relevant information regarding the individual components and the individual facade elements as well. As you can see here, all of the heights, the penetration of water vapor. So important information uh, regarding the facade elements uh, can be found inside the material lists as well. The information can be found inside all of the individual components, so in inside of the facade elements, you'll find this information included as well. So as you can see here, we've used uh, just the Imago, so what I'd like to do is actually 
choose this facade and choose another facade component. So if we go and choose the micro, type F micro, and go ahead and place that out. And if we go back to our schedule list, we'll see now that that particular facade element is available in the schedule quantities list. As you can see here, um, the, the nature micro F panel is available there and we see all of the other settings as well. We can even get out uh, renderings, so some nice high-end renderings. I've just done a quick rendering here uh, via the Revit app, but there's other external applications where we can get out some nice high-end visuals as well. So we're extremely happy with this application, the Stanley Facade Cladding Tool um, for Revit uh, 2013 and 2014. So thank you very much for your time and we'll see you next time.